I don't know about you. I start this conversation like that many times before. But, you know, sometimes things bug me. No, really. I mean, they kind of hurt my feelers. Matter of fact, they make me bummed out or sad. Sometimes even disgusted or, you know, like really blown away. Because the things that I studied, or the things that I know to be true, sometimes people argue about. You know, they they really don't see it that way. And I kind of look at them and think, what are you thinking? Where are you going with this? Do you realize what you're saying? And I've learned in ministry over the years that most of the time, people just don't think about what they're saying. Most of the time, people don't think about what they're doing. As a matter of fact, I have a pretty good idea that most of the time people just aren't thinking, period. You know, considering their ways, meditating on those things that God has said to do His way, pondering the way that they're walking or talking or choosing to live their life, going about their common sense that they call anything they do that makes sense common. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, common sense is a misgiven way of looking at the world and its ways because, quite frankly, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not in your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge Him and He direct your path. And in another scripture, God said, My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways. And so, often when I hear people tell me about common sense, it makes no sense to me because I want God's sense. I want what God sees, what God does, and what God's will is for my life. I don't want to lower my standards and somehow fit in and conform with everyone doing their thing the way they want to do it because they're on a learning curve and their curve may be going neom instead of neom. You see, I want my learning curve to be exponentially increasing. To go from kind of like, you know, growing like this to suddenly choom, shooting straight up. As a matter of fact, I would rather have an exponential curve going upward than a gradual curve going downward. So, I don't know about you, but I don't want to lower my standards. I want to raise the bar. As a matter of fact, I want my common sense to give way to God's sense. I want it to make perfect sense because I'm dealing with perfection. Yes, I want to be perfect even as my Heavenly Father in Heaven is perfect. And only God can do that to me. Only God can do that in me. And God is working through me in order to accomplish that. But I still have to participate in that in some ways. And so sometimes I get a little bummed out, you know, when people start talking about guns and killing each other. You know, oh, guns don't kill people, you know, people kill people. No kidding. Anybody with a gun has the potential to kill someone. Pardon me, but that doesn't sound very smart, especially if you already know you're saved. Now, this is what I find interesting. A victim that's saved isn't a victim, because if they're saved, they're living forever in heaven. But a victim that's not saved, if they're dead, they're in hell. I think they got the rewards, and I think that, quite frankly, one isn't a victim where the other one is. So, I don't really understand Christians owning guns or possessing guns or thinking that they need to protect themselves. They have eternity. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Why do we fear for life? Rather, Jesus said, fear him who, after dying, is able to cast a soul into hell. That I might fear, but as far as dying? No, I'm not afraid of dying. You know, it's kind of like, well, it kind of goes along with the territory called life. <laughs> if you're in this life, you're going to die, one way or another. And quite frankly, you know, people use all these arguments about protection and deliverance and all this stuff, you know, about, ooh, it's only common sense. you got to go out and protect yourself. Really? You know, I like my protection coming from the Lord because... I don't know about you, but now, you can go out and build a strong tower, you know, a big giant tower, kind of like the Tower of Babel. 
you could build a strong wall about your house, you know, and kind of like the, the walls of Jericho, you know. You can, uh, like, you know, put your strength in your armies or in your arms, you know, like having the might, you know, your guns and everything else, like uh, Pharaoh in his army. And quite frankly, I don't know about you, but common sense would say, of course, be an Egyptian. Have strength of character, you know, by using your guns and protecting yourself with your army. <laughs> After all, it worked for the Egyptians, didn't it? Or, you know, kind of like build your strong tower. After all, that's what Nimrod did with Babel. You know, go ahead and, you know, kind of like increase, you know, your knowledge so that you could build walls about yourself. You know, kind of like what, you know, like the, you know, the Torah was supposed to be done and they came up with the Midrash. And the Drash, you know, came up with the Talmud so that nobody even knows now today what the heck they were thinking. Because they're so far removed from what God said that even Jesus said you don't know what you're doing by removing the law of God by your traditions of men. That was one wall, spiritually. But you see, there was another wall that was built too that was so impregnable, no one could tear it down. The walls of Jericho. And the funny thing is, it wasn't by strength that the walls of Jericho came down. But God... Oh, ooh, don't mention that word. <laughs> That's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You don't want to mess with that God. You know, the God that Jesus called Father. You know, the God that I say is my Lord and my God. I don't know about you, but, you know, when they start talking gun controls, and they start talking about owning guns and possessing guns and fearing for your life and protecting yourself, I kind of like where I have my strength because it comes from the Lord. I kind of like where I have my security because it comes from the Lord. I kind of like where I have my direction for my day every day because it comes from the Lord. As a matter of fact, my God sense tells me that common sense makes no sense at all because common sense looks at what is common to man but not what is divinely inspired. I choose rather to go a different direction, a different way. I choose to follow the Lord today and to do what He may say because you see, if I'm listening to what the Lord's saying to me, and He's directing my steps, and He's protecting me, then He's going to tell me today, uh, Michael, I don't want you to go, you know, to the right, go to the left, because down the right, there's, you know, this accident about to happen, and you know, if you don't go to the left, you're going to get involved in that accident. I go, okay, you know, hang left, and then you know, break my routine and go left, or you know. I wake up in the morning and God says, uh, Michael, you know, um, I want you today to get out of the house. Okay, and then there's a fire. <gasps> Ooh, wow. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. What a, oh, miracle? Or is it just obedience? You see, common sense should be the automatic God sense that we just do what God says to do. Jesus said it this way. I only do those things that I see my Father in heaven doing. I only do those things that please Him. As a matter of fact, He got up every day before the break of dawn in order to spend time with His Father so He knew what to do. I don't know about you, but when I look at the life of Jesus, Herod killed all the children, all of them, that were in the same town as Jesus. And just to be on the safe side, He killed all the children in the surrounding towns. Remember that? Funny. Jesus didn't protect himself. God delivered him. Interesting, isn't it? God delivered him. It wasn't by Jesus pulling a gun and shooting Herod, you know, while he was a baby. Didn't work that way, did it? Huh. No. He didn't tell Joseph, Hey, Joe, I want you to go out and get a sword, you know, and start conquering in the name of the Lord. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, he said, Flee! Head for the highlands, or in this case, the downlands, and go to Egypt. And there I will call out my son. Because whether Joseph remembered it or not, God had prophesied a long time before it happened what was going to happen. Because you see, there's a big difference between knowing what's going to happen and not knowing what's going to happen. When you don't know what's going to happen, you go out and buy a gun. When you do know what's going to happen, you ain't worried about a gun. <laughs> Matter of fact, that's probably the stupidest thing you buy. You trust in the Lord to tell you what's going to happen. Because trusting in a gun isn't going to tell you what's going to happen. It's going to tell you what's going to be done in the name of a gun. And that's going to kill someone. Now God is able to direct those whom he chooses and whom he uses. Because you see, 
Many are called, but few are chosen. God has given us His Spirit to be led by the Spirit. As many as are called to be saved are led by God to be saved. And God leads them to salvation. God leads them to eternal life. God leads them through this life so that they would be a witness of God's revelation of who God is, of what God is, of what God can do. Maybe you have your trust in the Lord, but you still kind of like, you know, want to hedge your bets a little. Be careful. Jesus said those that live by the sword would die by the sword. Be careful you're not, you know, adding to yourself and your salvation idols that you're making into something not godly. Be careful you're not fleshing out when you should be spiritualizing everything, seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness so that you'll be so heavenly minded, you're all earthly good. You'll be so attuned to hearing God's voice, you'll do as He tells you to do every day. Because you see, if you can't hear God speak, if you're not doing what God says to do, if you're not obeying the word of the Lord, then you probably need a gun. Because after all, you're really disobey God aren't you because if you were following hard after the Lord then Jesus himself would say yeah go out and buy a gun he may not tell you to use it but he may tell you to go use it to keep it for whatever reason because you see God's will will be done irregardless there are lots of people that are getting prepared for not Jesus return but their hearts are getting manipulated in order to be ready to March into Megiddo. Are you going to march into Megiddo? You servicemen? Are you going to automatically you know, jump on the bandwagon and think you're going to deliver Israel and wind up in the valley of Megiddo destroyed? Do you really think that God is going to ignore those that are violent and use violence as a means to propagate the word of God? I don't think so. The Catholics tried it and they failed miserably. It was called the Inquisition for one, and it was called the Crusades for another. As a matter of fact, most religious arguments and history prove that every time a Christian arms himself, he disarms the Spirit of God from moving in his life. Most of the time when Christians arm themselves, they go out in religious fervor doing in the name of God what God never told them to do in the first place. See, God wants you sensitive. God wants you tender. God wants you personable. God wants you to be, as Jesus said, like little children. For such is the kingdom of heaven. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never put a gun in a little child's hand. And I never will. So, if you come to me and you try to tell me about weapons and guns and politics and all these other things that really make no sense at all to me for a Christian to be doing, I'm going to ask you, quite frankly, is that what Jesus told you to do today? Really? Is that what God told you to do today? Really? You think that's what God wants for you in the kingdom of heaven? Or after you die, do you think you're really going to have weapons that do no good when your battle is spiritual and not flesh? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. The enemy you think you're killing with your gun has nothing to do with the real foe who is out to deceive you and to lead you in the way that you don't want to go. He wants you to go to war, and he wants you to fight for your country, and he wants you to fight for your ideas, because in fighting, you're failing. But in yielding, you're succeeding. Interesting, isn't it? Jesus yielded to the will of God for his life and died. If you want to overcome in this life, you must yield your common sense for something we call God sense. You see, we need to raise the bar to a higher standard. We need to keep our standards perfection and to raise ourselves up to achieve that by way of letting God work in us to accomplish His will, both to do and to will of His good pleasure, which is to make us perfect, even as our Heavenly Father in Heaven is perfect.